Hello and good morning. Welcome to our worship here at Bread of Life, Deaf Lutheran Church. My name is Michelle Lewis. And I am the pastor here. And I am thrilled that you have joined us for worship today. Hello, my name is Dorothy Sparks. And I am the deacon. And I'm happy that you have joined with us. And hello, my name is Wendy DeVore, and I am the interpreter for today. Today is Sunday, February 21st. Today is the first Sunday of Lent. Our Lent theme this year connects with the paper chains that we started on Ash Wednesday. You cut these pages apart. Each Sunday in Lent, we will connect the Bible lesson with the concept of breaking free from different kinds of attitudes and habits that act like chains on our lives or for others' lives. Breaking free from chains is different than letting go. To break free, we must do a few things. First, we become aware of the chains. Then we learn the effect of those chains on our behaviors. The next step would be that we resist those chains. And then we actively work to break the chains. And that includes asking others to help us break free of those chains. Breaking chains that hold us is hard work. We need to keep at it for a long time and we cannot do it alone. We thank God for the community that helps us, that God gives us one another and God gives us support. Some ideas act like chains for us. And during Lent, we will focus on breaking free from different chains. The first week, we'll focus on breaking free from stereotypes of others and fear of others. We break free of that for the purpose of connecting with one another and relationships that honor all of God's creatures. In the second week of Lent, we will focus on breaking free from our pride and comparing ourselves with others. We break free from that for the purpose of celebrating that God's grace is given for all. 
in the third week of Lent, we will consider how despair drowns out hope. And we break free from that despair and hopelessness for the purpose that hope does not miss anyone, not one person, not one coin, not one sheep. None will be lost. The fourth week of Lent, we focus on breaking free from our sense of entitlement and self-importance breaking free for the purpose of faith and trusting outside of ourselves. The fifth week of Lent, we will focus on breaking free from the chains of shame and embarrassment, breaking free for the purpose of healing and restoring. When we get to Palm Sunday, we will break free of the expectations we have of how things should go. And we break free for the purpose of celebrating all that God brings to us. And finally, on Easter Sunday, we will break free from the chains of death for the purpose of new life. Our chains are gone. Thank you, Deacon Dorothy. And now for those of you at home, please uh, get ready to light your candle and I'll be lighting a candle as well. Let this be the season you turn your face toward the one who calls to you. And please follow along, return, return to the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always.
and also with you. Prayer of the day. God, you are compassionate. You easily love those who look unlovable to us. You readily welcome undesirable people into your home. We are slow to follow your example. Turn our hearts towards all who are considered outcasts. Shunned and unclean. Help us love our neighbors without pity or apathy. Because Jesus is our Redeemer. And Jesus became human to redeem the world of sin and death forever. And now, a reading from Psalms 15. Who can live in your tent, Lord? Who can dwell on your holy mountain? The person who lives free of blame? Does what is right and speaks the truth sincerely? Who does no damage with their talk? Does no harm to a friend? does not insult a neighbor. Someone who despises those who act wickedly, but who honors, who honors those who honor the Lord. Someone who keeps their promise even when it hurts. Someone who doesn't lend money with interest. Who won't accept a bribe against any innocent person. Whoever does these things will never stumble. Amen. Before I begin the gospel reading, I would like to give a little background information on it. And the question that's asked in this gospel lesson is who is my neighbor and the Samaritan? So back in biblical times, there were people who were half Jewish and from another country. So they were not pure Jewish people. And so the Jewish people would not speak to them or have anything to do with the Samaritans. So there were many Jews who would not travel through the country of Samaria because they did not want to interact or deal with these Samaritans. So however, Jesus uh, challenges this point of view through these parables. The next gospel reading is about Martha and Mary. And I remember before I would become confused in trying to remember who was the one that was sitting and who was the one that was working. I knew they, they were sisters, but I kept forgetting who did what. And then when I was talking with a friend, 
of mine about this. She gave me a clue. So Martha, and the last name, Martha has an A, and that relates to the sign like working. And Mary stayed to sit at Jesus's feet. So that helped me to remember who was doing what. And so Jesus was challenging them to think about what was the most important task, to listen or to go about work. So now I will begin the first gospel reading from Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 42. Then an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. He said, Teacher, what must I do to get eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you understand from it? The man answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. Also, love your neighbor the same as you love yourself. Jesus said, your answer is right. Do this and you will have eternal life. But the man wanted to show that the way he was living was right. So he said to Jesus, but who is my neighbor? To answer this question, Jesus said, a man was going down the road to Jerusalem, from Jerusalem to Jericho. Some robbers surrounded him, tore off his clothes, and beat him. Then they left him lying there on the ground, almost dead. It happened that a Jewish priest was going down that road. Seeing the man, the priest did not stop to help the hurt man. He walked away. Next, a Levi came near, seeing that the man was hurt. The Levi went around him. He would not stop the hurt man either, and he just walked away. When a Samaritan man traveled down the road, the Samaritan came to the place where the man hurt was lying. Seeing the man, the Samaritan felt sorry for him. The Samaritan went to him and poured olive oil and wine on the wounds. Then he covered the wounds with the cloth. The Samaritan had a donkey, so he placed the hurt man on the donkey and took the hurt man to an inn. There he took care of the hurt man. The next day, the Samaritan took out two silver coins and gave them to the person who worked at the inn. The Samaritan said, take care of this hurt man. If you spend more money than this, I will pay it back to you when I come again. Then Jesus said, which of these three people do you think was really a neighbor to the person who was hurt by the robbers? The teacher of the law answered, the one who helped and showed mercy. Jesus said, then go and do the same. While Jesus and his followers were traveling, they went into a town and a woman named Martha let Jesus stay at their house. Martha had a sister named Mary. Mary was sitting at Jesus's feet and listening to Jesus. Martha was busy doing all the work that had to be done. Martha went in and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all this work by myself? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are getting worried and upset about too many things. Only one thing is important. Mary has made the right choice and it will never be taken away from her. Here ends the gospel reading. My friends, grace and peace to you from Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. As Dorothy mentioned at the beginning of our worship, um, this Lent, we are following a theme uh, called Breaking the Chains. And we are putting together some paper chains. 
You can see I have um, several of my chains hanging up on my door. And each week of Lent, or each Sunday of Lent, we will focus on a kind of chain that keeps us bound or tied down. Things that hold us back from reaching out to others. Things that cause us doubt. Maybe they, those chains make us doubt ourselves or we doubt others too. And then we're using these papers to make a chain, actually to create a paper chain, um, counting up the days until Easter. And then we'll be keeping track of kind of what God is teaching us and our journey as we create more length to our chain. And, and a number of these links, these papers, include ideas of how we can break those chains in our lives. Things that keep us from connecting with God and with one another. And so for today, we are going to think about and wrestle with the um, chains of our stereotypes or our assumptions about others and our fears of others. In today's gospel lesson, there are two stories and both of those stories help us see layers of expectations that are placed on other people. Those stories can also help sort of show us where we might be afraid of other people. And then we, we hold back or we resist caring for those people who are right in front of us. So often, the first story that was included in our Bible lesson today, it's often called the Good Samaritan. The word good is not ever used to describe this person in the Bible story. It's a word that's been added that people have added over time to describe it. And I think that word, it might work to create some sense of um, expectation or some label for multiple people in the story. So we think of the Samaritan as good because that's the name of the story when we think of that person, the guy who stopped and helped, he took care of the man who had been beat up and he took him to an inn and he paid for him and all of that. When we think of that person as good, then it can be easy for us to think of the other people in the story, the priests who went around it's easy for us to think of them as bad. I just want to say that because in the world we have a history of hatred and bias against people who are Jewish, it's important for us to notice that this idea that the Samaritan is good and the other people are bad, that it might cause us to think of Jewish people as bad.
Now, that's not really the point of the story that Jesus is telling, but it is a, a layer of uh, uh, expectations that influences us. And it's been passed on from generation to generation in the world. And so it's one of those spots where it's an opportunity for us to notice, oh, that might be influencing me. That might be changing how I see others. So that's the first thing I want to say about that story, the Good Samaritan. We might want to stop using that name and call it, some people call it something much more bulky, the Samaritan who was good or who did good things. <clears throat> so another thing I want to say about this story that Jesus tells, the first story that Jesus tells of the man that's hurt on the road. Jesus introduces that story in a very common way for his time. He lets people know there are three people in the story. And often when there are three people, the first two do it wrong. And then the third person finally succeeds. Jesus does something that's surprising here because he introduces the story with a priest and then a Levite, who is a person from a particular tribe in Israel. And then the normal story would be like, and then an Israelite came along. But Jesus shakes it up and makes everybody listen a little closer. Wait, wait, wait. Because the third person is a Samaritan. Now, Dorothy referenced this in the introduction to the gospel. The Samaritans and the Israelites um, had a difficult relationship. Because they have, like, they come from the same kind of roots. Their roots are the same. But over time, a couple of groups formed, um, some in the northern kingdom of Israel and some in the southern kingdom of Israel. And they have different religious beliefs. Even though they have the same common ground, they have some different um, interpretations. So the Samaritans set up a different place to worship. They don't worship in the temple. And they read a slightly different version of the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. So the way they interpret their faith is different from the Israelites. And those differences led to a lot of animosity and fighting and divisions. And so they really, they did not respect one another. So for Jesus to use this story and describe a Samaritan as the one who does the right thing is, I wrote down the word unsettling, but I think I would say it's like very disruptive. People would be like, wait, what? What did you say? Who? I think like for us, it might be telling a story in which Another Christian person is the hero in the story. But that Christian is somebody who says, oh, racism is okay. It's just the way it is. It's fine. And they don't have any sense that we need to see one another equally because we're all created by God. And we would be like, wait, how how is that a hero? How? I think it might be something like that. So with this story, as with many parables, Jesus is really trying to wake us up and get us to notice that we have 
um, assumptions about other people that we expect other people to behave in just one way. And that our assumptions and our expectations, they get in the way. They keep us from reaching out. They keep us from caring about the people that we encounter in our lives. It's a little bit, uh, they, and those assumptions and expectations act like chains for us. They act like chains. They keep us tied down. And in this story with Mary and Martha, Jesus continues this pattern of shaking up expectations. In that culture that Jesus lived in, it was the women's responsibility to provide hospitality to visitors. They were responsible for preparing all the meals, making sure that people had a good place to sleep. They were um, responsible for cleaning up and making sure that guests had whatever they wanted or needed. And so for Jesus to praise Mary for sitting and listening, that would have upset anybody who was there hearing that story. Because in the culture at that time, Martha's criticism of Mary, so Martha was complaining, Mary is just sitting there not doing anything, expecting me to do all this work. That complaint and criticism would have been expected. And so that Jesus answers and criticizes Martha and her busyness, that would have been shocking. Again, people would have been like, wait, what, what did you say? What? And they would have had to really wrestle with what Jesus is saying to believe it. Because Jesus just said, it is better to sit and listen than to welcome the stranger and make them comfortable. So Jesus is working hard here to upset uh, people's expectations, to shift, like to shake them awake. And the same thing, um, to shake, uh, Jesus also is trying to, I think, shake us awake to our assumptions and our expectations about other people. Because often our assumptions make us afraid of others. Our assumptions can lead us to see other people, our neighbors, to see them as one-sided, either good, like us, or bad, different than us. And so our assumptions and our fears, they can act like chains, things that keep us from entering into relationships, things that keep us from connecting with others. And so these paper chains that we're making, where we add a loop, We've added a loop each day from Ash Wednesday and we'll keep going until Easter Sunday. 
These can help us become aware of our stereotypes, our, our assumptions about others. And they can help us become aware of how we are afraid of other people. The slips of paper include prayers and Bible verses. They suggest conversations we can have and give us some activities. And in those things, the prayers and the Bible readings, the conversations and activities, we can start to notice when we resist. When do we hold back from one another, from our neighbors, and from God? I look back through the few chains that we've done to see what they um, included. On Ash Wednesday, the slips encouraged us to pray, uh, to pray for others to be, oh wait, 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 wait. On Ash Wednesday, the Bible verse encouraged us to store up our treasures in heaven, not on earth. That means that we spend our time and our energy in our lives on things that last. Showing kindness and care for other people, taking care of creatures in this world rather than being focused on getting things and having piles and piles of stuff. And then in the days since Ash Wednesday, that's where the slips have encouraged us to pray for others, to be intentionally grateful for some something, and to be purposely kind to others especially to be kind to others who are ignored or overlooked. And today's paper is a breath prayer. It encourages us to breathe in the idea of freedom or liberation and to breathe out captivity or being chained down. So I wonder when you do this, what assumptions or expectations you will notice. And it might be assumptions about other people, but it could also be assumptions about yourself. At the beginning of the worship service, Dorothy and I chatted about the process of breaking the chains that bind us, those things that hold us down. And the first step is to notice those chains in our lives. And these assumptions are stereotypes that we carry around about ourselves and others. Those assumptions act like invisible chains And until we notice them, we might not even realize they're holding us back. So in this next week, I invite you to do this breath prayer to focus on those promises of freedom and liberation and to let go of the um, 
or to breathe out at least, it's, it's not really fully letting go, but to breathe out that sense of being a captive or being held so that you can notice these assumptions that you have. Because we all have assumptions, we all have them. And just noticing them, that's the place where we start. We notice, and then we might say, I wonder how that assumption acts like a chain in my life. How does it keep me from caring for others? Particularly, how does it keep me from taking care of those who are right here in front of me? So I'm going to leave you with that to ponder as you go through this next week. Prayers of the people. Let us pray for all people of God and their needs. Merciful God, help us know your presence during our Lent journey. Teach us again about baptism, a gift from you. Help us share our resources to glorify you and to help others. Every day, remind us to pray. Turn our attention toward others. Show us that our treasures are in you alone, God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Peace from the Lord with you always. Also with you. Please share the peace from God with others. Dorothy, peace be with you, and peace be with you. All right, as you all can see, Dorothy is in the sanctuary at Bread of Life, and we have the Lent candles set up there.
And each week of Lent here at Bread of Life, we put out a candle. And so over the next six weeks, those lights will go out, reminding us that there is more darkness than light. During Lent, we share the story about Jesus' betrayal, his suffering and death. But we do this so that God is revealed to the world. And this first Sunday of Lent today, we are reminded that inside of us, we have hidden expectations and that sometimes those expectations and assumptions make us feel afraid of other people. Those hidden things will prevent us from loving and caring for others. And in fact, sometimes those hidden assumptions prevent us from loving ourselves. The stories we have today remind us that God is revealed when we accept the responsibilities and joys of caring for one another. God is revealed when we remember that we are beloved by God just because God decides to love us, not because of anything we do. So as Dorothy puts out another light on our candles, we acknowledge our mistakes and our sins. We admit that we get distracted from following God and that sometimes we ignore and even hurt our neighbors. And we call out, God, we need your hope. So at this time, ask Dorothy to put out one of the candles. Let us pray. God, as we journey through this holy season of Lent, give us strength and courage to follow you more closely. Open our hearts and minds to your constant presence. Help us put our trust in you. Amen. At this time, we invite you to prepare your offerings. We take this season of Lent, these six weeks, and we turn our gaze and our attention to the Lord. And at the same time, we are invited to put some action into our faith. That active kind of faith can look like a number of different things. It includes this work of self-examination, of understanding ourselves better, and repenting, turning around toward God. 
that active faith also looks like prayer and then intentionally giving up some food, fasting. It also looks like giving generously and serving others with love and kindness. And finally, it includes receiving the gifts of word and sacrament from our worshiping community together. And in our Lutheran tradition, those sacraments include the Lord's Supper and baptism. So here now is an opportunity for generous giving. Every week we ask for your support, your financial support to help the work of our little church to continue our mission, which is to share the good news that God loves deaf people and their families. And to say loudly or to say boldly and courageously that here at Bold, we love deaf people and their families too. And so we share the good news. God loves you. So we invite you to give generously to this work. And you can send a check to Bread of Life. Uh, let you know we do check our mailbox multiple times a week. Or you can use online giving option uh, through PayPal or our Give to the Max Day website. And you can find both of those on our website. So I'll put that address up. So we invite you at this time to prepare your offerings. And now the offering prayer. Lord, when you open your hands, we are filled with good things. May these gifts be signs of our gratitude and the love which embraces all your children. Amen. And now the Lord's Prayer, which will not be voice interpreted. Receive the blessing before you go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Please follow along. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>